Hello friends, it's been a while. Uh, I haven't been well, so I haven't been out on the fields at all. I have been missing it like crazy, but uh, just no breath to get out and do it. So today is the day that I thought, you know what, I'm going to go and give it a go. So I'm out here on a slightly different field, near to the tatty field, but not the tatty field. Um, there's a tremendous har, as you can see behind me. A har is a Scottish word for a real fog that comes up off the water, which is just down that way. Uh, and it just sits in inland areas until the sun comes and burns it off. I don't know if this one, it looks like it's going to burn off. There's a bit of uh, brightness coming through, so the har may burn off. But uh, anyway, just having a, a little... Uh, slow donder around the field seeing what we can see i've got my first signal so i thought we'd have a look at it and see what it is i'll get you swung around and i'll uh, turn the headphones off so you can hear what it sounds like on the simplex and uh, we'll see what we've found i wanted to show you these strange things that are in the field here that uh, are these uh, they look like a metal detectorist has been and has been uh, doing lots of digging and not filling in their holes, but it's not. It's uh, it's some sort of creature that's digging up grubs or something. I don't know, it might be a badger or something like that. Um, but uh, yes, it does make me feel a little bit like, please, Mr. Farmer, don't think it's me, because uh, it's definitely not. But uh, anyway, back to our signal. So let me move the spade. There we go, get the spade out of the way. Get the right, I've got a slightly jumpy signal here, but it's nice and strong. So let's have a dig it up. It may be slag on this field because this is a field that is definitely within that metalworking area. But let's have a dig up and see what it is. So whatever it is, is right here in this clod. I uh, forgot my pin pointer. I forgot my fines bag. Uh, I haven't been detecting in, in the two weeks that I've been unwell. So uh, my car is not set up. I do at least have my uh, my vest on so that uh, I can find, you know, the things that I need are in my, uh, my fishing vest. But my fines bag and my pin pointer are all at home. Uh, so I'm doing this the old fashioned way where you just rub it in front of the coil to see what it is which bit of the earth has the find in it. And I think it might be that little tiny bit of something there. Yeah, absolutely. And it looks like, sorry about that. Uh, I think that might be a little bit of a 22 bullet. How exciting, but it's a find. On to the next. Okay, on to the next signal. I am pretty sure this is going to be a can, because look at how far up I am from it. It's still reading true. don't know if you can see that, but I'm a good six inches above it. You probably can't see the perspective, but it's screaming at 67. That's likely to be a can, but uh, this is a new field to us, so let's check it out. Okay, folks, it wasn't a can. I think I can see it just down in there, as the chig says. Do you see it? Do you? Do you? I believe this. Oh, yes, there we go. Screamy, screamy, says the simplex. We have a coin. So, I'm going to need to get my reading glasses on. I believe that's just a modern uh, Victoria. Uh, well, modern Victoria. Or modern Queen Elizabeth, even. Um, I think that is a ship half penny. Have a look at that. That is a beautiful ship half penny. I'll get the date on it. I will clean this up and I'll put a picture in now. So, just took a little break because uh, I was getting the reading glasses on to see about that uh, half penny. That's a 1955 Elizabeth II ship half penny, and it's the nicest one I've ever found. I'm really chuffed with that because it's in absolutely beautiful condition. And it just goes to prove if I had assumed, because I lifted the detector six inches off the ground, if I'd assumed that that was a can and not dug it, I would have missed that coin. So, you know, in a new field, dig the signals because you don't know what they're going to be. You don't know how the soil's going to change it. Um, and uh, that one was not too, too near the surface, but obviously it was near enough that when I lifted the uh, detector up uh, six inches off the ground, it was still reading quite strong. So, you know, this is a, a good case in point of dig the signals until you're absolutely certain in your mind and you can go away go to sleep at night and not think, oh, I should have dug that, what was it? Um, you know, know your field and your ground well enough and know your detector well enough 
that you can miss these things, but that only comes with time and practice and getting out here. And uh, as I said, that signal, I chose to dig it because I'm new into this field. I've only ever been in it once before and it was a year ago. Um, and I thought, mm, I'm just not sure that's too strong. It's probably aluminium. If it is, you know what? I've dug up a can and I've taken it out of the farmer's field. If it's not, hey, what is it? So it was a 1955 ship half, um, half penny. And uh, Gavin's come over, he's gone back now, but uh, he's uh, managed to find a George II with a big old thistle on the back. Uh, I used a chart that uh, I screenshotted off of someone's video online uh, that is uh, an outline of all of the rulers. Um, it was Aaron off of uh, South Coast Detecting. He had it in one of his videos. He put up an image of the silhouettes of all the rulers uh, that go on the back of the British coins. And, uh, and I took a picture of it and I've got it on my phone and I was able to identify uh, this coin that Gavin has found. I think it might be a bobby. It's too big to be a turner, um, but I'll put a photo up of it after I finish speaking and, uh, and an idea of what it is. So that's what he's found. So that's pretty good, two coins. I found a bullet, he's found a bullet. Um, uh, yeah. We're doing all right. Folks, here's another odd one we're going to dig. So let's get her over the, where's the signal gone? I've lost it. Signal there. Come around here. Just up there, I'm catching iron with it. So, but it is giving a good solid signal. So even though there's iron with that signal, I like the sound of it, let's dig it. Okay friends, so it turns out on this occasion, that bright signal was our friend, charcoal or slag. There she is. Hope you see it, hope that's focusing in on that. That's why we're getting the bright, but the tiny bit of iron, and uh, I don't know the sounds well enough in this field yet. Uh, so that's what we've got. So let's head on to the next. So just a little stop to uh, check a signal, and I'm sure this is another bit of that slag, so I'm not even going to dig it. You can't see the, uh, you can't hear the headphones, but you can certainly see the way that it's jumping around, and it's just like that previous one was. Um, the reason I turned the camera on was this is a field full of stubble, and I wanted to show you also how beautiful it's clearing up down there. Look at that view. It's absolutely getting just gorgeous. But it's a field full of stubble. Now, the simplex on full sensitivity, and field is managing absolutely fine. Bashing through the stubble like this, it is not falsing because I have the SP24 coil on. Bang, 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 no falsing whatsoever in the headphones. But when I come across, when it gives me a spark, it lets me know that there's a signal. What I'm doing, and this is the hint for you, is I am just scooching or removing, more technical term, the bit of stubble over the signal so I can get a clearer shot at it. So say I got a signal there, I would just take the boot and just pull the bit of stubble to the side and then I can actually get a clear shot over the signal without worry about it not reading properly because I can't get close to the ground or I can't get under the stubble. And uh, because this coil is so sensitive and because the 2.77 overpowers the simplex so that you get this real depth on the SP24, um, even though I'm not right on the ground and I am bashing through this stubble, you can hear it, it's not falsing, but it is picking up the signal. And when it picks up the signal, I can then remove the stubble and get in a good listen at it. So uh, that's just my hint and tip for you. If you're in a stubble field uh, and you get a signal, take the stubble out of the way with your foot and uh, put the simplex on it and see if you can get a better lock on that signal before you dig, which is what I did with this. And now I'm going to be leaving it here because I don't want any more slack, thank you. I'm gonna bring you back on this one. It was a signal that was reading 1920, um, absolutely solidly from above the stubble. And then when I cleared the stubble, it was still reading that. And I thought, okay, it's a bit of aluminium, so I'm not gonna actually film it. But as I've dug the hole, um, it's now reading differently. It's now reading in the 30s and 40s. Probably means it's a crushed up piece of aluminium that's just changed its tone because I've moved it. But I thought, mm, just in case it's something, let's turn the camera on and let's see. 
So uh, here we go. This is you flipped around. See, it's completely changed. That was an absolutely solid 1920 before. So uh, I'll need to put the camera down because I'm having to use the simplex as my uh, um, pinpointer. But uh, I'll dig it out and, uh, and then we'll talk about it. So, after getting myself uh, a bit puffed in digging that out, I had to come, uh, I had the original hole dug there. I've had to come right over to the side and it was way down deep. We're, we're talking about, oh, a good um, six inches or so. We have this little guy, a little button. Uh, sorry, a uh, little button. And uh, I don't know if we'll get any detail off of it, but uh, I like buttons, so I'm happy. And I'll put a cleaned up picture of it in now. It's been a little while since I've had a signal other than that slaggy stuff or uh, one bit of aluminium that I dug up, scrunched up foil. Uh, that dip is definitely going to be somewhere to check because where that ground drops down, that's where things are going to funnel to. So we will definitely get to that. I don't know if it'll be this trip. Uh, I'm getting a bit breathless. I'm almost to the end of this field. I think I'll just turn around and go back. I don't want to push it. But uh, I've got a signal here and this is for my friend Ed Luke. Uh, who is a member of the Simplex Plus Owners Group and he's new to the Simplex and he's getting out there. He doesn't have a lot of local support where he is and uh, he's finding a lot of iron and he's finding a lot of junk as you do when you first start. But I've said to him, you will know it when you walk over it. You will absolutely hear it and there will be no question that that's something that's different to what the rest of it is. So I've got this signal and uh, this is for you, Ed. I want you to hear this. Now that is on park one. I've switched to park one because I'm near to a house, which is just over there. So there's a lot more iron and stuff coming up. Uh, so I wanted a bit more separation between things in the ground and the iron signals, just in case. So I wanted it to be able to tell if there was stuff sitting right next to each other. And I was willing to sacrifice a little bit of depth for that. So, uh, and this is what it's picked out. You will absolutely not mistake that for anything else. We put it over to field. Again. Solid signal. No hint of iron whatsoever. And we'll go over to park two and put it up to full sensitivity. That is just... That's the sound of an unmistakable signal. And Ed, you will come across one. And when you do, you'll go, that's exactly what Laurie was talking about. It's there. There is no question about it. Now, let's find out what it is. So Clive, I have to say, I am really grateful for my uh, knee pads today because uh, my dungarees that I normally wear are in the wash. So I didn't have them to put on, so I'm really glad that I don't have, since I don't have my pinpointer, I'm needing to kneel down. My knee pads are making all the difference. So it's in this bit here somewhere. Let's pick through, old fashioned way of finding where your signal is. You pick up your clods and you swing them over your detector until it makes a noise. So it's in that lot there. Still in that lot there. Is that a coin ball there? Yeah, it seems to be. Unless it's that that thing setting it off there. Let's check. Let's move that slightly. No, I don't think it is in that. Nope. Right, make sure she's not being too sensitive. Or is it this thing here? Ah, that's it there. Okay. What is it? Now, it doesn't look like it's going to be anything particularly exciting. It looks like an old cover for something. Uh, don't see any writing on it at this point. It's a wee little lid cover for something. Let's uh, give it a knock on the spade so that it can get the dirt out of it. Oh, I can handle it. Sorry, I'm working with my, my other hand. There we go. Dirt's coming out of it now. Okay. So, uh, not terribly exciting, but you were absolutely certain of that signal. 
Uh, it'll be a copper alloy from the way that it was reading up. It is not iron or steel. Uh, I don't know what it is. If you do, let me know. It's obviously, it looks like it's a latch that went onto something that snapped off, possibly the, the hood of an old, is it an old car? No, it's not a car. So uh, I don't know, we'll get it cleaned up and we'll see what it is. But it was an absolutely solid signal. There was no questioning that was anything else. There were no grunts of iron. I will check the hole and make sure that's what it is since I don't have the pen pointer. But uh, that is a solid signal. That's what you're listening for. Um, I'll just check this and I'll let you know what we find out.